A Wrinkle in Time, Chapter 5, The Tesseract. Keep this picture in mind. And this. And this. And this. Chapter 5, The Tesseract. Yes, Miss Witch said. He is behind the darkness so that even we cannot see him. Meg began to cry, to sob aloud. Through her tears, she could see Charles Wallace standing there, very small, very white. Calvin put his arms around her, but she shuddered and broke away, sobbing wildly. Then she was enfolded in the great wings of Miss Watson, and she felt comfort and strength pouring through her. Miss Watson was not speaking aloud, and yet though, and yet through the wings, May could understand words. My child, do not despair. Do you think we could have brought you here if we, if there were no hope? We are asking you to do dif a difficult thing, but we are confident that you can do it. Your father needs help. He needs courage, and for his children, he may be able to do what he cannot do for himself. Now, Miss Witch said, are we ready? We are, where are we going? Calvin asked. Again, Meg felt an actual physical tingling of fear as, as Miss Witch spoke. We must go behind the shadow. But we will, but we will not do it all at once, Miss Watson com comforted them. We will do it in short stages. She looked at Meg. Now we will test her. We will wrinkle again. Do you understand? No, Meg said flatly. Miss Watson sighed. Explanations are not easy when they are about things for which your civilization still has no words. Calvin talked about traveling at the speed of light. You understand that little, Meg? Yes, Meg nodded. That, of course, is the impractical long way around. We have learned to take shortcuts wherever possible. Sort of like math? Meg asked. Like in math, Miss Watson looked over at Miss Who. Take your skirt and show them. La experiencia es la madre de la ciencia. Spanish, my dears, Cervantes. Experience is the mother of knowledge. Miss Who took a portion of her white robe in her hands and held it tight. You see, Miss Watson said, if a very small insect were to move from the section of a skirt in Miss Who's right hand to her left, it would take quite a long walk for him if he had to walk straight across. Here's that picture again. Swiftly, Miss Who brought her hands still holding the skirt together. Now you see, Miss Watson said, he would be there without that long trip. That is how we travel. Charles Wallace accepted the explanation serenely. Even Calvin did not seem perturbed. Oh dear, Meg sighed. I guess I am a moron. I just don't get it. That is because you think of space only in three dimensions, Miss Watson told her. We travel in the fifth dimension. This is something you can understand, Meg. Don't be afraid to try. Was your mother able to explain a tesseract to you? Well, she never did, Meg said. She got so upset about it. Why, Miss Watson, she said that it had something to do with her father. With, she said it had something to do with her and, her and father. It was a concept they were playing with, Miss Watson said. Go beyond the fourth dimension to the fifth. Did your mother explain it to you, Charles? Well, yes. Charles Wallace looked a little embarrassed. Please don't get hurt, Meg. Please don't be hurt, Meg. I just kept at her a while. I just kept at her while you were at school till I got it out of her. Meg sighed. Just explain it to me. Okay, Charles said. What is the first dimension? Well, a line. Okay, the second dimension. Well, you square the line. A flat square would be the second dimension. Here's your second dimension, that single square. And the third, well, you'd square the second dimension. Then the square wouldn't be flat anymore, so it'd have a bottom and sides and a top. 
there's your third dimension, a 3D cube. And the fourth, well, I guess if you want to put it in mathematical terms, you'd square the square. But you can't take a pencil and draw it the way you can the first three. I know it's got something to do with Einstein and time. I guess maybe you could call it the fourth dimension. I, I guess maybe you could call the fourth dimension time. That's right, Charles said. Good girl. Okay, then. For the fifth dimension, you'd square the fourth, wouldn't you? I guess so. Well, the fifth dimension's a tesseract. You add that to the other four dimensions and you travel through space without having to go the long way around. In other words, to put it in, into Euclid or old-fashioned plane geometry, a straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. For a brief illuminating second, Meg's face had the listening, probing expression that was so often seen on Charles's. I see, she cried. I got it. For just a moment, I got it. I can't possibly explain it now, but there for a second I saw it. She turned excitedly to Calvin. Did you get it? He nodded. Enough. I don't understand it the way Charles Wallace does, but enough to get the idea. So now we go, Miss Witch said. There is not all the time in the world. Could we hold hands? Meg asked. Calvin took her hand and held it tightly in his. You can try, Miss What's It said, though I'm not sure how it'll work. You see, though we travel together, we travel alone. We will go first and take you afterward in the backwash. That may be easier for you. As she spoke, the great white body began to waver. The wings to dissolve into mist. Miss Who seemed to evaporate until there was nothing but the glasses, and then the glasses, too, disappeared. It reminded Meg of the Cheshire Cat. I've often seen a face without glasses, she thought. But glasses without a face? I wonder if I go that I wonder if I go that way too. For first me and then my glasses? She looked over at at Miss Witch. Miss Witch was there and then she wasn't. There was a gust of wind and a great thrust and a sharp shattering as she shoved through. What? Then darkness, silence, nothingness. If Calvin was still holding her, her hand, she could not feel it, but this time she was prepared for the sudden and complete dissolution of her body. When she felt the tingling coming back to her fingertips, she knew that this journey was almost over, and she could feel again the pressure of Calvin's hand about hers. Without warning, coming as a complete and unexpected shock, she felt a pressure she had never imagined, as though she were being completely flattened out by an enormous steamroller. This was far worse than nothing this had been. While she was nothing there was nothing to breathe, there was no need to breathe, but now her lungs were squeezed together so that although she was dying for want of air, she, there was no way for her lungs to expand and contract. To take in the air, she must have to stay alive. This was completely different from the thinning of the atmosphere when they flew up the mountain and she had to put the flowers to her face to breathe. She tried to gasp but a paper doll can't gasp. She thought as though, she thought she was trying to think, but her flattened out mind was unable to function as her, as her lungs. Her thoughts were squashed along with the rest of her. Her heart tried to beat it. Her heart tried to beat. It gave a knife-like sideways movement, but it could not expand. But then she seemed to hear a voice. Or, if not a voice, at least words. Words flatten out like printed words on paper. Oh no, we can't stop here. This is a two-dimensional planet, and, then, and the children can't manage here. She whizzed into nothingness again, and nothingness was wonderful. She did not mind that she could not feel Calvin's hand, that she could not feel, could not see or feel, feel or be. The relief from the intolerable, intolerable pressure was all she needed. Then the tingling began to come back to her fingers, her toes. She could feel Calvin holding her tightly. Her heart beat regularly. Blood coursed through her veins. Whatever had happened, whatever mistake had been made, it was all, it was over now. She thought she heard Charles Wallace saying, his words round and full as spoken words ought to be. Really, Miss Witch? 
You might have killed us. This time she was pushed out of the frightened fifth dimension with a sudden immediate jerk. There she was herself again, standing with Calvin beside her, holding on to her hand for dear life, and Charles Wallace in front of her. Looking indignant, Miss What's It, Miss Who and Miss Which were not visible, but she knew that but she knew they were there. The fact of her presence was strong about her. Children, I apologize, came Miss Witch's voice. Now Charles Wallace, calm down, Miss What's It said, appearing not as the great and the beautiful beast she had been as they last saw her, but her in her familiar wild garb of shawls and scarves and the old tramp's coat and hat. You know how difficult it is for her to materialize. If you're not substantial yourself, it is very difficult to realize how limiting protoplasm is. I am sorry, Miss Witch's voice came again. But there was more than a hint of amusement in it. It is not funny, Charles Wallace gave a childish stamp of his foot. Miss Who's glasses shone out, and the rest of her appeared more slowly behind them. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. She smiled broadly. Prospero in the Tempest. I do like that play. You didn't do it on purpose? Charles demanded. Oh, my darling, of course not, Miss Watson said quickly. It was just a, under a very understandable mistake. It's very difficult for Miss Witch to think in a corporeal way. She wouldn't hurt you deliberately, you know, that. And it's really a very pleasant little planet and rather amusing to be flat. We always enjoy our visits there. Where are we now then? Charles Wallace demanded. And why? In Orion's belt. We have a friend here and we want you to have a look at your own planet. When, when are we going home? Meg asked anxiously. What about mother? What about the twins? They'll be terribly worried about us. When we didn't come in, when we didn't come in at bedtime. Well, mother must be frantic by now. She and the twins and F Fort will have. She and the twins and Fort will have been looking and looking for us, and of course we aren't there to be found. Now don't worry, my pet," Miss Watson said cheerfully. "We take care of that before we left. Your mother has had enough to worry about. Your mother has had enough to worry her, with you and Charles to cope with, and not knowing about your father, without our adding to our." without our adding to her anxieties. We took a time, we took a time wrinkle as well as space, we took a time wrinkle as well as a space wrinkle. It's very easy to do if you just know how. What do you mean? Meg asked plaintively. Please, Miss What's It, it's all so confusing. Just relax and don't worry over things that needn't trouble you. Miss What's It said. We made a nice, tidy little time tester, and unless something goes terribly wrong, we'll have you back in about five minutes before you left. So there'll be time to spare, and nobody will ever need to know you were gone at all. Though, of course, you'll be telling your mother, dear lamb, that she is. And if something goes terribly wrong, it won't matter whether we ever get back at all. Don't frighten them, Miss Witch's voice came. Are you losing faith? Oh, no. No, I'm not. But Meg thought her voice sounded a little faint. I hope this is a nice planet, Calvin said. We can't see much of it. Does it ever clear up? Meg looked around her, realizing that she had been so breath breathless from the journey and the stop on the two-dimensional planet that she had not noticed her surroundings. And perhaps this was not very surprising, for the main thing about the surroundings was exactly what that they were unnoticeable. They seemed to be standing on some kind of nondescript flat surface. The air around them was gray. It was not exactly fog, but she could see nothing through it. Visibility was limited to the nicely definite bodies of Charles Wallace and Calvin, the rather unbelievable bodies of Miss What's It and Miss Who, and the faint occasional glimmer that was Miss Witch. Come, children, Miss What's It said. We don't have far to go, and we might as well to walk. It will do you good to stretch your legs a little. As they moved through the grayness, Meg caught an occasional glimpse of, of slag-like rocks, but there were no traces of trees or bushes, nothing but a flat ground underneath their feet, no sign of any vegetation at all. 
Finally, ahead of them, were, there loomed what seemed to be a hill of stone. As they approached it, May could see that there was an entrance that led into a deep, dark cavern. Are we going in there? May asked nervously. Don't be afraid, Miss Watsit said. It's easier for the happy medium to work within. Oh, you'll like her, children. She's very jolly. If I ever saw her looking unhappy, I would be very depressed myself. As long as she can laugh, I'm sure everything is going to come out all right in the end. Miss What's It, came Miss Witch's voice severely. Just because you are very young is no excuse for talking too much. Miss What's It looked hurt, but she subsided. Just how old are you? Calvin asked her. Just a moment, Miss What's It murmured and appeared to calculate rapidly upon her fingers. She nodded triumphantly. Exactly two trillion. 379,152,497 years, eight months, and three days. That is according to your calendar, of course, which even you know isn't very accurate. She leaned closer to Megan Calvin and whispered, It was really a very great honor for me to be chosen for this mission. It's just because of my verbalizing and materializing so well for you know, materializing as well, you know, but of course we can't take any credit for our talents. It is how we use them that counts, and I make far too many mistakes. That's why Miss Who and I enjoy seeing Miss Witch make a mistake when she tried to land you on a two-dimensional planet. It was that we were laughing at, not at you. She was laughing at herself, you see. She really... She's really terribly nice to us younger ones. Meg was listening with such interest to what Miss Whatsit was saying that she hardly no noticed when they went into the cave. The transition from the grayness of outside to the grayness of inside was almost unnoticeable. She saw a flickering light ahead of them, ahead and down, and it was toward this that they went. As they drew closer, she realized there was a fire. It gets very cold in here, Miss Watsit said, so we asked her to have a good bonfire going for you. As they approached the fire, they could see a dark shadow against it, and as they were closer, and as they went closer still, they could see that the shadow was a woman. She wore a turban of beautiful pale mauve silk and a long, flowing purple satin gown. In her hands was a crystal ball into which she gaze, was gazing raptly. She did not appear to see the children. Miss What's It, Miss Who, and Miss Witch continued to stare at the crystal ball, and she. And as she stared, she began to laugh, and and she laughed and laughed at whatever it was that she was seeing. Miss Witch's voice rang out clear and strong, echoing against the walls of the cavern, and the words fell with a sonorous clang. We are here. The woman looked up from the ball. And when she saw them, she got up, cur she got up and curtsied deeply. Miss What's It and Miss Who dropped small curtsies in return, and the shimmer seemed to bow slightly. Oh, medium dear, Miss What's It said, these are the children: Charles Wallace Murray, Charles Wallace bowed, Margaret Murray. May felt that as felt that if Miss What's It and Miss Who had curtsied, she ought to also. So she did, rather awkwardly, and Calvin O'Keefe. Calvin bobbed his head. We went. We want them to see their home planet, Miss Watsit said. The medium lost the delighted smile she had worn till then. Oh, why must you make me look at unpleasant things when there are so many delightful ones to see? Miss Watts Again, Miss Watsit's voice reverberated through the cave. There will no longer be so many pleasant things to look at if responsible people do not do something about the unpleasant ones. The medium sighed and held the ball high. Look, children, Miss Watson said, look into it well. Que la terre es petite qui la voie de souf. Dalil, how small is the earth to him who looks from heaven? Miss Who intoned musically. Meg looked into the crystal ball, at first with caution, then with increasing eagerness as she seemed to see an enormous sweep of dark and empty space, and then galaxies swinging across it. 
finally they seem to move in closer on all the ga finally they seem to move in closer on all of the galaxies your own milky way miss what's it whispered to me they were headed directly toward the center of the galaxy then they moved off to one sides stars seemed to be rushing at them Meg flung her arm up over her face as though to ward off the, bl the blow. Look, Miss what's -it commanded. Meg dropped her arm. They seemed to be moving in, in toward a planet. She thought she could make out polar ice caps. Everything's sparkling clear. No, no, medium dear. That's Mars, Miss what's -it reproved gently. Do I have to? The medium asked. Now, Miss Witch commanded. The bright planet moved out of her, their vision. For a moment, there was the darkness of space. Then another planet. The outlines of this planet were not clean and clear. It seemed to be covered with a smoky haze. Through the haze, Meg thought she could make out the familiar outlines of continents, like pictures in her social studies books. It is because, our it is because of our atmosphere that we can't see properly? Is it because of our atmosphere that we can't see properly? She asked anxiously. No, Meg. You know what it is, not the atmosphere, Miss Witch said. You must be brave. It's that thing, Charles Wallace cried. It's the dark thing we saw from the mountain peak on Uriel when we were riding on Miss What's-It's back. Did it just come? Meg said in agony, unable to take her eyes from the sickness of the shadow that darkened the beauty of the earth. Did it just come while we've been gone? Miss Witch's voice seemed very tired. Tell her, she said to Miss Whatsit. Miss Whatsit sighed. No, Meg, it hasn't come. It hasn't just come. It's been there for a great many years. That is why your planet is in such a trouble is that is why your planet is such a troubled one. But why? Calvin started to ask, his voice croaking hoarsely. Miss Whatsit raised her hand to silence him. We showed you the dark thing on Uriel first. Oh, for many reasons. First, because the atmosphere on the mountain peaks were there is so clear and thin you can see it for what it is. And we thought it would be easier for you to understand if you saw it, well, someplace else first, not your own Earth. I hate it, Charles Wallace cried passionately. I hate the dark thing. Miss what's it nodded. Yes, Charles, dear. Yes, Charles, dear. We all do. That's another reason we wanted to prepare you on Uriel. We thought it would be too frightening for you to see it first all on your own. Beloved world. But what is it? Charles demanded. We know that it's evil, but what is it? You have said it. Miss Witch's voice rang out. It is evil. It is the powers of darkness. But what's going to happen? Meg's voice trembled. Oh, please, Miss Witch, tell us what's going to happen. We will continue to fight. Something in Miss Witch's voice made all three of the children stand straighter, throwing back their shoulders with determination, looking at the glimmer that was Miss Witch with pride and confidence. And we're not alone, you know, children, came Miss What's It with Miss What's It the Comforter. All through the universe, it's being fought all through the cosmos, and my, but it's a grand and exciting battle. I know it's hard for you to understand about size, but there's a very little difference in size in, of the tiniest microbe and the greatest galaxy. You think about that, and maybe it won't seem so strange to you that some of our very best fighters have come right from your plan own planet, and it's a little planet, dears, out on the edge of a little galaxy. You can be proud that it's done so well. Who have your, our fighters been? Calvin asked. Oh, you must know them, dear, Miss what's it said. Miss whose spectacles shone out at the triumphantly, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. Jesus? Charles said, Wallace said. Why, of course, Jesus. <clears throat> of course, Miss what's it said. Go on, Charles, love. There were others. All your great artists. They've been lights for us to see by. Leonardo da Vinci, Calvin suggested tentatively. And Michelangelo? And Shakespeare? Charles Wallace called out. And Bach! And Posture! And Madame Curie! And Einstein! 
Now Calvin's voice rang with confidence. And Schweitzer and Gandhi and Buddha and Beethoven and Rembrandt and St. Francis. Now you, Meg, Miss Watson ordered. Oh, Euclid, I suppose. Meg was in such an agony of impatience that her voice grated irritably. And Copernicus, what about, but what about father? Please, what about father? We're going to your father, Miss Witch said. But where is he? Meg went over to Miss Witch and stamped as though she was as young as Charles Wallace. Miss Watson answered in a voice that was low but quite firm, on a planet that is given in. So you must prepare to be very strong. All traces of cheer had left the happy medium's face. She sat, holding the great ball, looking down at the shadowed earth, and a slow tear coursed down her cheek. I can't stand it any longer, she sobbed. Watch now, children, watch. And that concludes chapter five.